Hello, and welcome to the second video on the Forgotten Gods and Saints of Tamriel. In the last video, we focused primarily on shrines to deities and individuals that could be found throughout High Rock and Hammerfell. Today, we're going to be looking beyond the Iliac Bay to Tamriel as a whole, and even delve into the Plains of Oblivion. You'll come to see that the word God has a very broad definition within the world of the Elder Scrolls. You're probably very familiar with the concept of the Adric Princes, the rulers of Oblivion and beings that refuse to partake in the creation of Mundus. But did you know that there are individuals that could be considered Demi-Princes, the biological children of the Daedric Princes? They are exceptionally rare, and some instances aren't even fully confirmed. But, the fact that they could have the blood of the princes flowing through them makes them worthy of discussion. Alondro Sewell Said to be the shield companion of Nerevar during the War of the First Council. According to the Five Songs of King Wolfharth, Alondro Sewell is the immortal son of Azura, who bore an artifact known as the Wraith Male. Wolfharth, the famous Nord hero, and Alondro fought during the battle where Wolfharth was defeated, but not before he blinded Alondro permanently. He was one of the few that spread the belief that the tribunal had murdered Nerevar. Haman Cameron the Cameron Usurper, who claimed the throne to the Cameron dynasty of Valenwood after taking it from his brother, Kaltos, in 3E249. Utilizing armies of mercenaries, Daedra, and undead, he launched an invasion against the rest of Tamriel, splitting throughout the western provinces. In 13 years, he managed to conquer all of Valenwood and Hammerfell. In 3E267, he was defeated by several kingdoms of High Rock uniting with Kaltos in the Battle of Firewaves. Shortly after, his son, Mankar Cameron, the leader of the Mythic Dawn and the primary antagonist of Oblivion, was born. There are disputed claims about his heritage, but there was a famous legend that he was the son of Molag Bal and a Breton woman. Speaking of Molag Bal, there are two individuals confirmed to be his children. The first is Ozozachar, a Daedric Titan said to be his son. His daughter is Molag Grunda, a winged twilight. In Morrowind, seeking to become cured of vampirism will lead you to a statue of Molag Bal in Bal Ur. He will tell you that his daughter has taken a Frost Atronach as her lover, which, being the very loving and concerned father that he is, is very disapproving of. After killing them, you will be cured of vampirism. Molag Grunda could also be found in Cold Harbor in ESO. Fa Nuit Hen the Multiplier of Motions Known, said to rule over the pocket realm of Maelstrom in Oblivion, and a child of Oethia. The first sermon of the 36 sermons of Avec talks about the origin of Avec, how he was given shape as an egg in the wife of a Necheman, who bore the egg within her. One day, seven Daedric beings came to the Necheman's wife and began to speak to it, teaching it motions that could be achieved by certain movements of the bones. An eighth one soon came, called Fa Nuit Hen, and alongside the others began to teach it different fighting styles. He soon left, returning to haunt the warriors who fell in battle and still wondered why. The seven Daedric beings are the barons of Move Like This, paragons of the martial arts styles of Oblivion. They are said to be projections of Fa Nuit Hen's concepts of perfect masters in combat. Emeg Gro Kera I talked about it in my third Obscure Artifacts video, so if you want his full story, go take a look there. But essentially, he is said to be the son of Malakath. Malakath was tricked into killing him by Sheagorath using the sword Nebcrescent and was forced to watch his son be taken away into the Shivering Isles. If he is truly Malakath's son, that would make him a demi-prince. Makella Leki Named after Leki, the Red Guard goddess of swordsmanship. An Anse warrior and one of Hammerfell's most famous heroes who is revered as a saint. She was born to a noble family in the First Era, and was said to have such innate talent that she was able to manifest a Shahai as an infant. She trained at the Hall of the Virtues of War in order to become a sword singer. In 1E950, e the city of Orsinium underwent a siege that lasted for 30 years, undergone by the joint forces of Sentinel and Daggerfall, led by King Joyle. However, King Joyle eventually betrayed the Red Guards and attempted to invade Hammerfell through Bankrai Pass. Makella heard word of the invasion and rushed over there with her band of maidens. An intense fight occurred, but one by one, Makella's forces began to diminish. Her back against the wall, Makella summoned her Shahai and managed to single handedly defeat the invaders and even King Joyle, though not before suffering a mortal wound. 
Hunding, the makeaway god, who appears when red guards undergo times of great strife. He has had three known incarnations, Diagna, Crown Prince Ator, and Cyrus. Diagna, the oracalc god of the sideways blade, was a major figure in the battles against the left-handed elves of Yokuda, and led his followers, the Order of Diagna, a group of Anse warriors, into combat against the orcs of Orsinium during the Thirty Years' Siege in the First Era. Crown Prince Ator was the leader of the crowns of Hammerfell in the late Second Era. After the death of his father, Fasad II, the four bears took control of Sentinel, led by Baron Bolag, and a bloody civil war was launched between the crowns and the four bears. Ator established his base at Stros Mackay, and, for a while, the war seemed to be turning in his favor, leading up to their plan of taking back Sentinel. That is, until the four bears asked Tiber Septim for help. The weakened crowns were no match for Septim's might, and Ator was mortally wounded by an arrow shot by Dram, the dark elf assassin who utilized the Bow of Shadows. His soul was later kept in a soul gem and was then fused with his long sword in order to create the Soul Sword which Cyrus used to defeat Lord Admiral Rickton and free Stros Mackay from Imperial control. It is widely speculated that the Elder Scrolls VI will take place in Hammerfell. If that's the case, then there is a very good chance that the player character could be an aspect of the Hoonding, returning in order to free Hammerfell from the clutches of the Aldmeri Dominion. Arius Arena allowed the player to generate a class based on responses given to a series of questions. These questions present scenarios and ask how your character would respond to them. One of them mentions a deity known as Arius, the god of fire. The residents of a primitive island were said to sacrifice a young child to it once every year. If they didn't, the volcano on the island would erupt, killing hundreds of its residents. Ball In Arena, there is a faction known as the Conclave of Baal, a religious temple who assisted the Eternal Champion in fighting the seventh piece of the Staff of Chaos in Black Marsh. We never learn who Baal is, however. The name bears a resemblance to Molag Baal, who was called Molak Baal in Daggerfall concept art. It probably isn't the Daedric Prince though, as their temples are publicly displayed in many prominent cities and towns, and the concept of Daedric Princes wasn't a thing at the time of Arena's development. The Blind God is the ruler of the Mantellan Crux, a pocket dimension within Aetherius, which you travel to at the end of Daggerfall. He is described by his servants, Small Skulls, to be a Jealous God, and Sheagorath, who you can encounter in his right eye, calls him a pompous upstart. Drissus and Goroflox the Unholy the book, Withershins, tells a pretty funny story about an Argonian who suffers from Withershins, an ailment that causes all of his conversations to occur in alphabetical order. One sentence starts with A, the next B, the next C, and so on. In it, two mysterious deities are mentioned, being Goroflox the Unholy and Drissus, who was invoked in the same breath as Boethia and Kinnereth. Fingers of Kinnereth Three spirits are known to be associated with Kinnereth, being Amaro, Pina, and Talatha. In the book series, 2920, the last year of the First Era, they are said to be called upon by the witches of Skeffington Coven in High Rock. In the book, a group of orcs was instantly killed by a fell wind sent by the fingers. They are said to be hard to rely upon as, the spirits, while marvelous companions and faultless tellers of truth, are often hazy about the when and hows. It is unknown if these are the only fingers, or if more exist. Insect God The book, The Atabala, is the memoirs of Morehouse, the winged bull. In a section describing the youth of Elysia, the founder of the First Empire, it is mentioned that the aliens of Sardavar Lead brought in various men from all across the Edmund to use as slaves. One such group, the Men of Gay, were wiped out after the Flower King Nalichi sacrificed them all to an insect god, whose name has long been lost. Ayus this one has a pretty funny story behind it. Ayus, the god of animals, is a deity that appears only in Arena, with his statues appearing in some cities. There are two myths associated with him, and the book, Ayus, Animal God, tells us everything we know. The first myth is the story of the ox and the evil farmer. One day, an evil farmer decided to kill all of his animals in order to have a big feast. The farmer slit the throat of his animals one by one, until he gets to the ox. 
The ox, not wanting to be killed, prays to Ayus to save him in the form of a loud moo. Ayus suddenly appeared with a large scale and ate the farmer, saving the ox. Ever since then, Ayus has been associated with a scale. The second myth is the story of Rock Park. In the town of Rock Park in Black Marsh, found in Arena, there is a store that sits directly in front of the town's entrance. Beta testers for the game asked why that was, and the obvious answer is that the towns in Arena were randomly generated, and the algorithm slightly messed up for this town. But, the developers thought that it would be funny to have an in-lore explanation for this, and decided that it would be the work of the deity Ayus. The way this story goes is that Rock Park was experiencing a time of great difficulty, as pestilence, disease, and curses had befallen the town. Guilds, villagers, and stores were rapidly leaving the town behind. Lady Grelina, the daughter of Lord Prufok, the town's ruler, noticed the despair her father was experiencing and wanted to help. She had a pet wombat that she loved very much, and told her father that if he wished upon it, then Ayus would grant whatever it was. Lord Prufok wished for a single business in Rock Park that would never leave, no matter the calamity. The thing is, the king had always been a bit cruel to the wombat, so the wombat told Ayus to place an equipment store in front of the palace that would never move. So, Ayus, in a great show of vengeance and wrath, did just that. The royal family ended up going mad and eating one another, and the wombat was, unfortunately, one of the first to go. It's a pretty silly store that wasn't really meant to be taken very seriously, but there you go. Kel, Rihanna, Springseat, and Ma Tilda. All of these deities are mentioned in the book King Edward. Kel is used in a swear, Springseat is a deity that partook in the trials of Sai, and Ma Tilda is a female dragon that is an esteemed peer of Akatosh. I should explicitly state that King Edward is considered to be historical fiction, so there is a chance that these three are completely made up. Assuming that they are real, however, then Ma Tilda could very well be a Jill, female dragon said to repair wounds in time after dragon breaks, though that's a complicated topic best saved for another time. The book also mentions the Order of Rihanna, which is the name of a temple that could be found in a few cities in Arena. We don't know who Rihanna is, though. Marduk the Good in Arena, you could end up with a random quest that tasks you with rescuing someone from a dungeon. Upon completing the quest, the NPC who gives it to you could say, May Marduk the Good smile upon you and grant you happiness as a sign of thanks. Sethiet Much like Rihanna, Sethiet is an obscure deity that had temples dedicated to him that could be found in cities throughout Arena. The book series, Mystery of Talara mentions how Jagar Tharn was a member of the temple and a follower of Sethiet a few years before he impersonated Uriel VII and started the Imperial Simulacrum.